Thank you, Valerie. That was such an inspiring opening speech. <laughs> I'm sure everyone here in the audience would agree. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's with immense pleasure that I welcome you all to this annual telematics event organized by Gurzum. I can see many familiar faces in the audience today and some of the new ones too. So it's nice to have all of you here. Um, for those who don't know me, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mirza Mohammad Nawaz. I'm the implementation manager at the Violon division at Gurtam in Dubai. Imagine that you have a very large customer uh, who has shared a list of requirements with you, uh, but you do not have anyone to assist you in evaluating this RFI. Or imagine you have a project where the customers have shared the requirements, but you do not know if Violon can deliver these points. And also, think about a situation where you want to select a GPS device, which would be the right fit for your project, but uh, you do not know which one to go for, and you do not have anyone to provide a loyal suggestion. So there might be many such situations where you would need some advice or someone to share the best practices with you, and this is the very reason why we implementation managers are here. Our main goal, dear partners, is to assist you in evaluating your RFIs or understanding the different functionalities of VLON and delivering the successful projects with VLON. So now you know whom to approach when you have a new project. OK, so um, today I'll make use of this stage to present to you the different uh, functionalities of VLON that have been launched. Uh, in the VLON ecosystem in the year 2021. This will be a very short overview and it will be super useful for you uh, as, you as you will have a complete overview uh, in a very nice and easy to digest way. The presentation itself will be divided into several parts with the Q&A session after each topic. So you can ask me questions if you have any. So let's proceed. What's new in VLON hosting this year? Well, this year, we have introduced a lots and lots of new features. But wait, uh, I'm sure you've heard the same line last year, and you've been hearing the same every year at telematics events. So what's different this year? I would say everything is different, uh, but there are three things at Gurtam that have never changed since its inception. That is innovation, dedication, and consistency. And here we are again after one more year of consistent efforts to present to you the new features of our flagship product, VLON. So now, let me introduce you to the future, the single sign-on. This is an ability to log into VLON using credentials of other platforms. Previously, a VLON hosting user could log into his or her account by using the VLON login and password. However, it was quite inconvenient when they use uh, a single corporate account for uh, all the other applications and they had to log into VLON separately. So we expanded the functionality with the Google login feature last year, but this time we went further. Now a user can log into VLON account easier and faster via a third-party app. The third-party apps can gain access to VLON via the Auth0 provider connected to our platform. However, when we launched this feature earlier this year, uh, the necessity to manually connect the VLON account uh, from the user settings in VLON did not make the feature as popular. So we made further enhancements, and after you have logged into the service now, uh, changes are automatically saved in the user settings. You can remove the connection at any time. Sounds cool, isn't it? So I'm sure you have made note of this feature, and you're going to uh, try this very soon. Uh, we have moved the fuel consumption settings to sensor settings in November 2020. But the tab of uh, fuel uh, sensors already uh, was always uh, remaining there. Uh, because we wanted to uh, you to get used to the new uh, fuel functionality, which is now in the sensors tab. But now we have checked the statistics and we saw you're more comfortable. So we have removed the fuel tab from there all, uh, fully. The unit type library. Previously, VLON users created unit type names on their own. Uh, it was time consuming and uh, the name could be incorrect or misspelled. Uh, the use of these names in VLON was very limited. They couldn't be used to create unit groups or customize the interface and so on. 
We carefully analyzed all the unit type names that our users entered, and we created a universal library. Um, so now, uh, when you go to the Profiles tab, you will find a, a vehicle type option there. So you can drill down to the exact type of vehicle which you want to choose, uh, the exact type of uh, vehicle. And you, you can also see a search bar. So if you have any difficulty in searching from a list of libraries, you can search with the search bar. And you also have a recently used uh, unit types available there. So that will be a useful feature also. Here's another awesome feature. Uh, well, uh, this is one of my favorites, by the way. Uh, the ability to detect unit location using Wi-Fi coordinates. So uh, using GPS is not always uh, possible indoors uh, due to the high uh, uh, signal attention by walls and the ceiling of the buildings. And LBS is uh, generally the uh, alternative, but it's not that uh, accurate, and uh, it depends on many extraneous uh, factors. So in this regard, the use of location uh, using Wi-Fi points for indoors and personal monitoring is becoming more popular. The devices that support Wi-Fi-based positioning can uh, send data about the closest Wi-Fi access points to VLON. Then VLON determines the coordinates and sends a request to Google Maps to receive the unit location. If the data does not meet the established uh, criteria of accuracy, which you have defined uh, right there on the accuracy points, then uh, the uh, VLON leaves the coordinates as it is. It will not replace it. So isn't that co uh, feature so cool? I personally liked it a lot, and I'm sure you're going to use it as well. And now it's time to see the most awaited feature of uh, VLON in the year 2021. Any guesses? OK, let's see if you're right. Previously, the dashboard, a tool for tracking the status of units, opened automatically. If there were more than 100 units in the work list, uh, uh, that in, it used to open automatically. Uh, that was not always uh, convenient, especially with a large number of objects uh, on the map. So the dashboard is a powerful tool. Um, with useful functionality. So now it is placed as a separate tab, uh, the very first tab which you see over there. <coughs> but wait, was this the most awaited feature? No. So let me tell you, uh, this is what I was talking about. It's the video module. <coughs> On December 31st, 2020, Adobe stopped distributing its Flash Player which is a common software which is used uh, for video and audio playback on websites. Most seriously, the Flash Player uh, uh, end of life affected the VLON's video functionality. So for you to still be able to use uh, the video module in VLON, we have developed an all new tab for uh, all new functionality of video and added to the interface. Let's take a deeper look into the new video module. In the previous version, video from MDVRs was sent to the server and only after that to VLON. The server was deployed, configured, and administered by our server uh, partners, uh, by our partners. So this ensured video stream conversion into MDVR. To simplify this work and make the solution universal, uh, we have redesigned its architecture. Now video streams from MDVRs get to VLON from Amazon Web Services. Now our partners no longer need to deploy servers. Uh, video is processed and uh, stored in the AWS cloud uh, without any participation from the partner side. Also, additional configurations of MDVR isn't required. Um, you can use the normal devices as any other GPS device uh, into VLON now. Now, connecting MDVRs will be similar to like working with any other GPS device. Also, you can see the screens here. Uh, the interface features uh, three sub -sub uh, subsections, the live stream, playback, and files. So let me tell you more about these uh, features. The live stream goes by its name, so whatever video your device is taking, it will display live over here, and down there you have a play and stop button, so at any point you can play the video and watch the live stream from the device. There is a playback tab which shows uh, the uh, playback uh, video which is retrieved from the device memory, and uh, uh, you can view it and you can play it. And then the files tab is where you can store the video files. Uh, this can be done through Two methods. Uh, firstly, manually, you can go to the playback tab and cut a portion of the video and save it as a file. 
Otherwise, you can use the automatic functionality, which is through notifications. Uh, so you can trigger a notification for speed or maybe driver uh, fatigue, and you can capture a video for a few seconds of that portion. And you can save that video over here in the files. And you can also associate a tag to each file. So when you're searching the videos, uh, you can able to search uh, with the tag uh, what kind of video it is. Also, video files are even linked in reports uh, to the events that triggered their saving. Now, the user will immediately see the report with a kind of event occurred to the unit and watch a video confirmation right in the report. More about the video module. <coughs> in the unit properties, there is a tab with video settings. Uh, the tab is used to view connected streams, uh, connected cameras, and uh, you can connect uh, simultaneously up to 16 cameras for one unit. In addition to watching a live stream from an MDVR, you can also track the unit on the map beside it, uh, as you can see here. So you do not have to switch to multiple tabs and uh, know where the unit's location is. Right from the video module, you can open the tab here. Um, OK, in this respect, we have even developed a special video service for VL on local uh, to view live streams by units in the modern format without using the Flash Player. I hope you all like the new video module, uh, which is going to evolve even further uh, as the time passes. Now let's take a look at what we have next. Previously, in the Access tab of the unit properties, a user could search only by the unit name. We wanted to make the search and its uh, results as comprehensive as possible. Uh, so now a user can choose from the dropdown which parameter to apply. Uh, whether he's searching for an account or a creator, and he can search easily there. What's new in VLON reports? All's well when uh, that ends well. So as you know, reports is the most uh, important feature for any software, as it's the final output or the end result of all the operations performed. All the data feed it into the system, etc. We continue improving the reports in VLON, and as you can see, uh, this year we have added a lot of uh, new columns into the reports, which were missing in the user's work. We created, uh, like when we are creating a report on geofences or a group of geofences, we added the ability to select not only single, but uh, a unit group. So now when the end user creates a new unit, he no longer needs to manually edit the uh, report and add the unit for it. He can just add the unit to the unit group, and he will be able to get the report. On tracks, in maps, and in the report charts, the markers uh, allow usually uh, to uh, quickly assess the situation with a unit. But it was impossible to find out from which tank exactly the fuel was drained. If several sensors were installed in the unit tanks and a filling marker was activated. Now, filling markers show which FLS uh, has uh, detected a fuel filling or theft. For example, the tank sensor uh, is marked as number one and the main tank sensor as number two and so on. Many of our partners use custom sensors. For example, when they want to uh, retrieve data, uh, like mileage data, from the canvas um, and not the GPS monitoring. But imagine that you need data uh, on a unit group where every unit features a number of sensors under different names. Previously, it was impossible to display such a variety of uh, sensors in a single report. Um, now, data from custom sensors can be displayed in unit group reports. So this new feature allows users to receive data from various custom sensors created for several units in one table. This, in turn, will save time and allow the convenient viewing of information. There's also a 1,000 separators feature launched. So now when you have big numbers, you will see them comma separated. So it will be easy for you to read it. We added the ability to display the order's custom fields in the order tables uh, for a unit. Now, the ability to available, uh, uh, this ability is available for the orders uh, for drivers, for the order report for drivers, uh, and also for unit groups and driver groups. Uh, we worked on the calculator's design in reports. Uh, required fields are now marked with asterisk, so uh, you don't have to fill the whole formula, and later on you come to know that, oh, this field was mandatory. You already have the asterisk marks, so you know which fields are mandatory to be entered. Um, if a field contains an error, the whole field itself will be highlighted and not just the text inside that formula. So that will be more convenient for you to understand where you're making an error. 
If a formula is too long, a scroll appears uh, there, uh, so it makes you to conveniently scroll to the whole uh, formula, and it will not uh, make the screen larger like before. And this calculator block redesign has become more uh, uh, attractive due to the reduced spaces. And when you start using it now, you will uh, already observe these changes. The calculator's design has improved in VLON local as well. Our users often employ the calculator to determine the duration of uh, different time intervals. Previously, the result of such a calculation was provided in seconds format. We have added a converter that uh, allows uh, to show uh, uh, the result in a user-friendly format as well as in the date and time format. Uh, new constants like uh, the report interval in days, report interval beginning and end, all these have been added in the calculator as well. I hope you found the information I shared helpful. Um, how many of you have uh, already used some of these features? Wow, that's uh, nice to see that uh, you're reading our blogs and following our forums, so, and it, you're bringing them to practice. This is exactly what motivates us in uh, keeping, uh, keep going on improving our product uh, even further. All right, if you have any questions about what I've shown you just now, you, it's the right time to ask. Yes, please. There is a limitation. Um, I'll have to uh, check the exact size of the file which you can store. But uh, what happens is if you cross that limit, which we have set, uh, the very first video file which you have stored will be removed from the database and it will be replaced by the newest one. That's how it works. Uh, but to tell you the exact uh, size of what uh, storage, yeah. It's 5 GB, yeah. 5 GB. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, for video, you mean? So uh, this uh, video is streaming to your VLON already, but it, the Adobe Flash Player has stopped now, so it will not be working anyways in VLON or in, on any other platform because Flash Player has stopped. So we have created the new functionality, and whatever device you're using, you can directly integrate it with our platform. You don't need the server. Okay. 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 So if your uh, clients are able to still work with the video module, as usual, it could probably be... Uh, oh, okay, you're using VLON Local. So basically, uh, there is a separate service for VLON Local. Uh, it is not uh, the same as VLON Hosting. So that's why you're able to use it as it is. Yeah. Uh, no, for VLON Local, we will be in coming up with the new video functionality for VLON Local soon. But for now, you can use the, continue using. There will not be any challenges. What's the plan for the future? There are a lot of plans <laughs> uh, for video. For video, it will uh, the same functionality what you have for VLON hosting will be available for local. We are working on it. When that time comes, what will happen to all customers so uh, you have your units already created in VLON. Yes. You have used the right device type. Uh, maybe you just have to repoint them from this, uh, the current server directly to the VLON server. And that's it. You'll not have any major challenges there. Uh, yeah, the, this can be a separate discussion regarding the showers, I would say. Any other questions? Um, test. Uh, as you know, some hardware, video hardware providers are having their own website for uh, video alerts and monitoring. Mm -hmm. For example, Streamax have their own uh, like uh, management tool where you can divide uh, like alerts by type, so fatigue, uh, distraction, etc. Mm -hmm. Would that be also available in Wialon, or you just see stretches of like cuts of videos? Um, so your question is that whether VLON can capture videos and store in this memory when there is a driver fatigue happens or... Do they store them by type or they just store... Yes, events? you can associate a tag for each type of video. Like this video is for a violation, for example. Okay. So you can associate a violation tag and you can save it. 
Some, sometimes it might be an over speeding uh, video. So you can associate a tag over speeding and you can save the video. So later on when you search with over speeding, you'll find all the videos related to over speeding. So, so it's one of those uh, three tabs we saw. The yes, live uh, and the it file is the files tab. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so uh, let's proceed. Now let's see what features the latest version of VLON Local has received. Okay, this is a pretty large list. Uh, basically, all the changes you're seeing here are for the admin panel in VLON Local. Um, there is now uh, an option to pick the skin out of uh, several default skins. On the status tab, now you can see the list of ongoing processes in VLON uh, with their completion percentage. And the administration system interface expands on the screens with higher resolution. Uh, it will help get rid of the relocation of elements to new lines, as well as uh, show more data uh, more efficiently. Uh, now the free space in the disks and directories vital for VLON local operation can be controlled with the help of email notifications. We added the ability to schedule the update for a certain time and day of the week. Uh, we developed the mechanism for the mass background export or import of the unit messages. Mm, we added the ability to upload logos for the uh, authorization page and the monitoring system interface. Uh, and the backup server installation can now be performed uh, using the VLON local ISO image. And now you can change the password to the administration system yourself. Uh, the Let's Encrypt certificates are now renewed beforehand. So uh, the renewal of the next certificate is, uh, starts only after the renewal of the previous one is done. We added the ability to send comments and suggestions directly from the administration system interface. In the port column in the hardware type, uh, hardware type section, you can change the port for the hardware type if for some reason the default port doesn't suit. On the system tab, we added the ability to set the period of, uh, in regards to the uh, database compression. For the partners, clients uh, working by the white label model, uh, you can remove the word SDK from the VLON API now. Uh, from the SDK queries, I mean. Uh, we added the ability to set up the email dispatch for the administrator to get only those that are important for him. Uh, we updated the list of available retranslators. Um, and as I mentioned, there were several uh, additions done to the admin panel. And now let's take a look at CMS. Uh, we added the separate column to the display of uh, number of uh, activated units uh, in the CMS in the accounts tab. A separate column uh, which displays the number of units that are currently active. Uh, this helps calculate the cost uh, at the end of the month of these units and uh, uh, simplifies the analysis of number of uh, active and deactivated units and the reports on them. Uh, in the monitoring system, uh, in the reports by GFNs and group of GFNs, we added um, new filters and more columns. In the group reports by units, we added the ability to mark the selected trip interval with a red line, as you can see, uh, and center the map on it when turning, it, uh, uh, turning on the display of all the writes uh, or messages on the map. To register the order confirmation or rejection, we have added a dedicated column, confirmation or rejection time. Now users exactly know the time of the confirmation or rejection of the order. In the order reports, we added the column uh, showing the actual time when the courier entered the geofence. So now the dispatcher will know if the courier is trying to complete the order even before entering that particular geofence, the delivery location. Uh, as we have already seen earlier during this presentation, uh, this dashboard tab is now a separate tab on the top there. Uh, we added the opportunity to set the time period for the dashboard. Uh, if you see the top bar there, uh, we added two new blocks on the dashboard, uh, the top units by fuel consumption and uh, top units by mileage that displays units from monitoring tab with the maximum fuel consumption and mileage for the specified period. Now hovering over the block, you can simply drag uh, the dashboard bars and you can adjust your dashboard as you like. We have delivered uh, two new map styles, uh, the Gurtam Maps Victor and the Gurtam Maps uh, uh, Modern Style. 
uh, both are vector maps. So apart from the fancy appearance what you see here, uh, the new vector styles are more technologically advanced and it enables us to add more new uh, uh, features to the maps in future. We have also added the geocoding and reverse geocoding and routing support. And now, after creating a geofence from the interface, it displayed on the map by default. Uh, and there is no need to spend time uh, manually enabling each created geofence. So whenever you create a geofence, now by default it will be visible on the map. You don't have to enable it manually. And if you see here previously the uh, geofences, if there were a small geofence under a large geofence, the smaller one would not be visible. But now if you see it has been arranged in a, such a way that uh, the visibility is uh, there for all of the geofences. Uh, what other improvements were done on the monitoring system? In the locator, we have the option of centering the map on the selected units. Previously, it was turned on by default after reloading the page. Not all users found it useful uh, because they had to turn it off all the time uh, when reloading the page. Uh, but now you have to do it just once when reloading the page. Uh, we added the option of, openly uh, of opening photos via external links. Uh, previously, this option was available for video only. In order to make the interface more user friendly, we have changed the layout of some blocks like the top uh, navigation panel, uh, work list, and uh, bottom information panel, etc. If you have started using the new latest VLON local version, you would have already observed these changes. We have added a new search criteria in the dashboard uh, that is with a phone number. We released an enhancement for counters. Uh, now, the relative sensors values can be used from the previous message. Uh, the relative census data uh, can be used not only in reports, uh, but also for mileage and engine hours uh, counters. So this, in turn, guarantees the correct operation of the maintenance. Previously, the ignition census timeout value was not considered when calculating the events in the VLON app for Android and iOS. It could lead to the data difference in reports in the system web version and the mobile app. Now, this value is considered and the data is uh, consistent. We added the filtration by geofences in the images table. So the new feature will come in handy when the um, user needs to download photos for a specific period uh, by each client. Uh, dear partners, I have just covered the VLON local improvements. Uh, how many of us are already using the VLON, the latest VLON 2104? Wow, that's a great number. Uh, how many of you would like to upgrade to the new one? Okay, so uh, when you have time, feel free to uh, get the details from your personal manager uh, or drop us a note at sales at the rate .com, uh, to receive the latest version of our platform. And now, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I will be able to answer them. Mm, okay, let's proceed. Uh, we are moving now uh, to take a look at the exciting updates of the mobile apps. We received multiple complaints from Huawei stating that their customers are moving to Android or Apple because the VLON mobile is not available on Huawei App Gallery. So we decided to uh, introduce VLON mobile on the Huawei App Gallery. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, how many of us are Huawei phone users here? Wow, they make good phones. I really like them. Uh, so uh, let's see what we have done. Uh, when you are logging into the VLON, now you can see a, a Huawei App Gallery icon there. So when you click on it, it will take you to the Huawei Marketplace, and you will be able to uh, download the app in your Huawei mobiles. What's new in VRTAC? I would say everything. Uh, the design has completely changed, if you see. Um, and uh, we wanted to make the VRTAC app uh, design as modern and intuitive as possible. Uh, we have completely redesigned the app uh, by switching to the modular widget system. Now, every function and action within the application takes the form of a separate widget. The user can easily find the needed functionality and hide the unnecessary options. Should the driver immediately report a car breakdown or another emergency case, it can be easily done with the send SOS uh, widget. What to do if the worker doesn't want the uh, sender says uh, widget or uh, some other widget? He can simply disable and hide it. What to do if the, uh, like, uh, every widget is available in short and the extended versions. So for different widgets, 
the extended version will vary. For some, it can be greater functionality, uh, for others, an increase in size, and for ease in, in use. The user can switch from the widget to the map using the top button right there. So the background will switch to the map uh, background as well. Uh, we have changed the approach to modes. How it was before? Uh, we used to have uh, four modes in the older VIADAC. It was the active, standard, light, and custom. The user selected the mode he uh, or she needed, and uh, they tweaked it for his or her tasks. This minimized the differences between the different modes, because there used to be a lot of custom modes they used to create for themselves, and they, they don't know which one to use. Now, uh, the approach to operation modes has become more uh, precise. Now, it is easier for the user to navigate to the VIOTAG modes and choose the most appropriate one, as you can see here. Now, there are three modes in VLON, uh, in VIOTAG. It's light, custom, and standard. The light and custom modes are uh, by default, and you will not be able to change them. Uh, if, you would, if these two modes doesn't suit you, you can go for the custom mode. Uh, you can set your own uh, custom criteria there, uh, and uh, there will only be one custom mode, so you will not get confused with a lot of uh, such modes there now. Um, okay. The login screen has been upgraded. The users of VLON hosting and VLON local can choose the most convenient authorization uh, by the method of account name. They can enter the account credentials, or they can enter the unit ID and password to login, or they can even log in through a QR code. Uh, so uh, the users no longer needs to uh, enter information and the server uh, as it is filled automatically. Another small but nice feature is uh, it has a dark mode. So you will be able to save your mobile battery and also less strain on your ass, uh, on your eyes. What is uh, the configurator of VIADAC? Uh, it was not always easy for the end users to navigate the application setup. To help them, uh, the previous version provided integrators with the remote configuration feature. It simplified the app setup, but still had a room for development. Uh, the integrator had to generate the configuration files and send them to the devices. And this didn't always come in handy for integrators. And they had to manually configure the app for each smartphone. We wanted the, uh, to spare the user from this uh, configuration work and at the same time facilitate it for the integrators. Uh, that's why we have developed the con separate configurator web application. The configurator flexibility uh, is uh, the configuring uh, is having flexibly and uh, remotely and in bulk. It configures the VIATAG uh, without physical access to the user's smartphones. Uh, the partner selects device from the list and settings are sent to them automatically without the need to edit the configuration file and manually send it using commands. The selected settings can be saved as a template, which is a great time saver. Uh, so, configurator even generates a QR code. Uh, so, uh, if uh, when the user logs in with a QR code, all the integrator settings apply automatically, with no need to reconfigure anything in the application. Also, the user doesn't have to send a password or an ID uh, to the worker. Uh, a, a QR code or a link will be sufficient for him to log into the app. Configurator can even request logs from the device for diagnostic uh, purposes. Uh, so now you do not have to call the user to ask him to send logs. Uh, the configurator, with the configurator, you can request logs automatically from the platform, from the app, and you will be able to get, uh, to get it. I'm sure you found this update very interesting, and uh, you will be exploring the app now. If you haven't done it yet, uh, it's the right time to ask me questions if you have anything regarding this. No, okay. So let's proceed. Uh, what's new in Hectera? An application for the agro industry which allows controlling field works uh, based on telematics data. We added the option of using alternative measurement units uh, for distance, time, area, and volume. Now you can specify the time in the 12 hour format and make Sunday the first day of the week. Uh, distance now can be measured in miles and feet uh, an area in acres and volume in gallons. We have made some changes in the layout of the pot potential cultivation registration page. Uh, there is now an option to select several drivers per cultivation. Um, you will also notice some other slight adjustments in the layout. Now, all the most uh, relevant information is available within one screen, and the user does not need to make any additional scrolling. 
Following the user's requests, we have added a new time option that is 6.30 in the working day starts at section. Uh, if you implemented safe deletion of crops and operations. Now, when you're deleting a crop, it will check if it has already got some operations or it is involved in some cultivation and it will also ask you for a confirmation before deleting it. The system will uh, ask for a confirmation, yeah. Uh, the top menu has been updated. The crops, operations, implements, and consumables became items within the catalogs menu. Also, now when using the quick method to specify the current crop, um, it is possible to set sowing and harvesting dates manually. There's also the option to set uh, to not set the harvesting date at all. We developed a new setting that is divide potential cultivations considering shifts. It helps to get the right interval uh, of work even if you don't assign drivers in VLON. We introduced the what's new window. It pops up. Uh, it pops up the in the uh, at the login and shows brief information about the new features uh, we release in Hectara. When Hectara calculates mileage and fuel uh, fuel consumption, it takes into account the time within which the unit makes a turn uh, outside the field. Previously, the turning time value uh, was two minutes. It it uh, didn't work for some users, uh, so now the user can customize the turning time value in search settings uh, in the resource tab. In Hectara, a campaign means agricultural work planning and control over its implementation. In a campaign, you can specify the operations like sowing or combining or operation dates and fields where operation will take place. Now we have a new campaign tab in the navigation panel that you can use for medium term planning. After you create and save your campaigns in Hectara, you need to register cultivations every day. This allows the application to build a graph, uh, as you can see there, um, so uh, based on the data obtained during the campaign, you will get this draft. It will show the total area and how much work has been completed, whether the campaign is running late or ahead of schedule. The report table has uh, been converted to CSS grid layout, uh, which is a modern interface design system. As a result, the application users see consistent, uh, consistently styled reports, uh, report tables with more readable content. Uh, you can change the visibility of the report columns in the table settings. Um, uh, if there are any registered consumables in the cultivation, they will be displayed in the reports table and one column uh, will be displayed for one consumable. Dear partners, I have just covered the Hectera improvements. If you have any questions regarding Hectera, you can ask me now. One moment. Yes, please. Uh, actually, it's not about Hectare, if you allow me, I forgot to ask about the previous section, uh, about the mobile applications. Uh, yeah. First question is about the Huawei application. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, can it be white labeled? Um, yes. Can be white labeled? Yeah, white labeled, yes. Okay, this is the first question. The second question about the uh, uh, the general mobile uh, app for Waylon hosting. Uh, actually, uh, we have problem with the uh, the event. Uh, as you know, the, mo the mobile app is working about the event. Mm -hmm. uh, it's causing some problems when uh, the uh, when the data coming from the black boxes, especially for the fuel theft. We have mm -hmm. a lot of uh, complaining from our customers mm -hmm. getting uh, fuel thefts when while the coverage is off. Mm -hmm. When the data come back, it have to recalculate uh, from your side. If yeah. they use well on hosting or if, uh, local, we have to recalculate the data. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, any solution for this rather than the recalculate the data? Basically, you're saying that uh, fuel theft happens, but they do, due to the C GSM uh, unavailability, the data is not received in VLON. And it will be received later from the black box. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we can, in such situations, we can use uh, maybe uh, uh, some devices, because if you're uh, having a dual SIM device, if even one device, uh, one SIM signal is not reached, there will be a separate, double, uh, a different SIM which signal which will be available. So uh, ideally, we can go for a dual SIM device, uh, which will, at least one of the GSM tower will be reached with this. That is the very straightforward thing I can uh, think of right now. My, my, my suggestion, I think, why uh, that the, the same user can recalculate his data when he finds some problem like refresh, 
to get mm-hmm. new data so uh, not to bother the support and support uh, recalculate the data and then return the email after one day so this the customer will keep complaining and I have theft and I will uh, punish the drivers and something mm-hmm. like that for one day or two days so I can solve it and tell him now check he will say you do some manipulation on data I cannot trust the, the system anymore so mm-hmm. it's hard to to convince the the, the way that the, the system work to the to the customer some customers are not fully educated so it's very hard so I, my suggestion is to mm-hmm. keep or, or to add a refresh button or something like that to recalculate in the, the data not we attack no in the wheel application mm-hmm. in the mobile, mobile, mobile application for the events so just okay. recalculate for this day and mm-hmm. check uh, the the events if it's okay or not uh, okay i would note this suggestion it's a very nice one however we can also have a further conversation mm-hmm. during our coffee break uh, to find out more about your client because i need to understand what exactly challenge they're facing so that i will be able to assist you something on this Okay, great. Another another question regarding yeah. the mobile application uh, is about the uh, video playing in mobile application. Mm-hmm. Like we have a, a video player. Uh, we will be having this. Uh, we are working on it. Uh-huh. And we are planning to uh, get this re- released soon. So this is perfect. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you, uh, Rafat, for your questions. Anyone else? Okay, let's proceed. Um, what's new uh, in Fleetron? Fleetrun is an app designed to plan, control, and manage costs for maintenance. So, and um, let's see what uh, new features we have done uh, for Fleetrun in the year 2021. Now you can delete fuel fillings in Fleetrun. Uh, you can add location in a fuel filling uh, and can also change the units of measurement, for example, from liters to gallons. Uh, you can see aggregated data on the object, uh, total cost of services, and fuel separately. Also, you can see the cost per one liter or gallon. This data demonstrates more complete information about expenses for a particular object. Fuel fillings that were previously managed in other systems now can be imported from the CSV or XLSX files for further use. In order to store and use fuel fillings data uh, outside the system, uh, you can export it to CSV file. We have added the option uh, by fleet, refueling, and by refueling facility, they can be found on the reports tab in the uh, report type field. You can now configure a notification so that it notifies you only about those services that are created for specific service objects or not, uh, or on the basis of uh, specific intervals. To do this, select the required service objects or intervals in the notification settings. Uh, now the unit name is automatically added to the notification subject. Thus, it's easier to understand uh, for which unit this notification is being displayed. You can also find out the vehicle's mileage or engine hours at the time of sending the notification. Uh, we have also added the service term of completion to the notification, uh, so it helps understand how soon the service is due. In the new fleet term version, the information on the dashboard page has been uh, has become more visual and uh, more detailed. The services section now contains a pie chart uh, which shows uh, the ratio of due and overdue services and the ones in progress. We have also import, improved the design of the units, drivers, and trailers um, sections so that they occupy less space on your screen. Now you can not only see the information about all the expenses of the fleet, but also select the required values, such as services or fuel in the cost section. You can select sections you want to display on the page. To do this, click on the icon uh, to the right of the calendar and select the required sections. We have added a warning uh, which is displayed uh, right over there. Um, So uh, it's on the fleet metrics and unit metrics charts. So if the value of mileage and engine hours were decreased in VLON within the period for which the charts are generated, then you will get such alerts. Uh, the values of mileage and engine hours used in the charts are obtained from the tracker, while the indicators in the cost section and in the upper section of the unit uh, are calculated based on the uh, values specified in VLON. We have also removed the limit for number of custom fields. So now you can add any number of custom fields. There. Uh, so these were the improvements in Fleetrun. How many of you are already using Fleetrun for any of your projects? Okay. And how many of you plan to use uh, Fleetrun for any of your projects? 
well that's nice to know uh, so if you want any kind of training on fleet run or if you want to have uh, 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 more understanding you can always reach out to our training team uh, or you can watch videos uh, vi video webinars on fleet run on our website and peter seems to have a question yes peter just one more. sorry thank you uh, fleet run is getting very popular especially that it's a built in app within realm but uh, one thing we were struggling with with clients is getting customized reports cuz It's a bit tricky getting reports. You have to select either by interval or by or by by. So, is is there an option where we can mm -hmm. have the similar structure of building reports in Fleetron as we have in Vialon? Well, uh, you always have Vialon API, I would say. We want the easy way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not the easy way, but you always have this. But yeah, Fleetron has its own uh, user yeah. UI, I would say. So it's slightly different from what how you get the reports from Vialon. But yes, if you would like to have a similar uh, kind of execution of reports like in Vialon, you can develop it Pro using APIs. Vialon API. Okay. One, uh, two. Is there any plan to do any uh, morning checklist before before every day for every car? Uh, as a small mobile app version for uh, Fleetron, um, we have uh, like it sounds like a very good suggestion. Why don't you uh, provide more details, like uh, where the email, or you can uh, we can talk over the coffee break, and I will yeah, try to yeah, collect. Yeah, I think the mobile app version of Fleetron, and we've been talking about this for I think before you for like two years, but sometimes mm -hmm. you are on the move and you want to add some data uh, in the Fleetron, and, mm -hmm. and and when the guy on the ground does the actual service, mm -hmm. he wants to be able to. Check it as as done or mark it as done, mm -hmm. and not go back to the web and do that. So, uh, it's a small mobile again. I would that. say uh, such custom applications usually partners do it using <laughs> Vialon API. They build some custom applications which can be given to drivers for completing services remotely. But again, if you have some suggestions, we can take it and uh, we will surely evaluate it. So, we will talk about it. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, we have a problem also with with the history of service. Okay, mm -hmm. some service need three years to do. So if the customer want to know the previous service, he could not know because one year history in the hosting. So okay. any chance to extend uh, the history for some event or in you know, all messages? Uh, here, the very simple uh, solution which comes to my mind is you can export the services and store it in Excel files, so you do not have any limit to store it. No, no, no. But no, in the uh, application itself, it has a history period. So, um, if it's, you would like it's to, it's not only in the, the application and the and the hosting itself. For the hosting as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some event it should be uh, stored more than one year. For more than one year. Yeah, for mm -hmm. the service. Okay, uh, that's. Uh, but uh, we have to, options for now. Now, customer need to know how many replace the battery, for example. Okay, mm -hmm. battery mm -hmm. if change two years, three years. So uh, I had uh, one case similar to this. So what we can also do is forward the data coming into Vialon to some third-party server uh, using our retranslator service or something like that, and in that server you can store all this information, all the data coming from your unit. If you are not comfortable in saving it in the VR, uh, in the rep uh, Excel reports, no. But uh, also the customer need to see in the report. in the VLON itself. In the VLON, yeah. This would again be a VLON API case. You will have to do some custom development. Uh, but again, the data will be uh, in VLON by default. It will be as per the history period which you have for VLON. So if you want to extend this and you want like more than one year, you can check with your personal manager if such options are available to have a one year of history period. If yes, that's Very straightforward. Otherwise, I would suggest going for API and build an interface just to store all the data. And see, it uh, will be like a basically uh, each unit may be sent ten uh, thousand message per day. Okay, mm -hmm. but we need to store only one message for three years. If I ask him to extend the history for my account, so it's I talk about the unit unit data message. Messages data. Yeah. Yes, but. This event, very important event, mm -hmm. it should store more than one year. 
Mm-hmm. Only the specific it's, events you want yeah, to store for more maintenance. Than one year. Yeah, mm-hmm. for, 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 uh, then SDA again, for it's maintenance. Some, so, so, it's you know, some event happen each two years or three years. You need to do mm-hmm. one event. For example, uh, mm-hmm. accident happen. You need to register on the car history or. Yeah, okay. makes sense. Um, again, uh, if you're talking about specific events, not uh, the entire messages, yes. then uh, probably I'll have to check if there is such an option where uh, we can make use of any of the VLON default apps to store this data. You, you know, some uh, sometime we go for local to fix this problem mm-hmm. with some customer. Customer yeah. need to know the history of uh, his spare part or whatever. After is it fine if we store this information like an Excel file attached somewhere in the platform? No, no, no. We, in the platform see, itself. See, for if, if I have a big customer, he he want to uh, he want to find his spare part, for example, when he changed this before when two years, for mm-hmm. example, how many he changed this uh, light or battery or I could not use local on this case. I have to use local. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because in local, I can control the history. But, you can uh, control, yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would say we can uh, brainstorm more on it because it's a tricky case where we, can, we have to think what will be the best suitable solution. So, Thank yeah. You. Thank you. I will come back to you on this. Excuse me. Uh, also, to add on this, uh, mm-hmm. the same situation uh, happens with the driver bindings. Mm-hmm. It is uh, also limited by the date, but it is. Uh, small data and uh, can be benefit for two or three years for some uh, customers or, or actually all customers. Uh, so I think if it is to be considered also. So basically this all are coming from the history period perspective to have an option to store more history. Yeah, for, for uh, only for these specific, specific events, yeah, specific not, not events. the data of the, of the trackers. Yeah. It's a very good suggestion, I would say. We'll uh, surely check with our business analysts if we can do something like that. Or what would be the alternate solution for you? Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, let's proceed. Yes, please. Yes, Mr. Suleiman. You've done all this with Fleet Run. Mm-hmm. Now, what this is obviously trying to determine what the average cost of a vehicle is, correct? Uh, yes. Well, what uh, services you're doing for all your vehicles? What is the cost you're spending on the services for all the vehicles? For example, it can be a fuel cost or a service cost or just an accident repair. Uh, so, so all this can be stored in this application. That's fine. What about the cost of the vehicle? Cost of the vehicle? Yes. Itself, the purchase cost. Absolutely. Um, because that comes number one. Mm-hmm. The cost of the vehicle, the maintenance mm-hmm. of the vehicle, the insurance of the vehicle, that yes. all needs to be into fleet run so that on one day mm-hmm. we need to know that if I've used a vehicle for 300 days, mm-hmm. the actual cost of the vehicle is there, including mm-hmm. depreciation, because it's an asset. Yeah, this is right. Depreciation is uh, at the next level, I would say, that functionality. But yes, you can add the uh, value of your vehicle. We have the option of custom fields in Fleet Run, so you can use any uh, number of custom fields, like cost of the vehicle, and you can specify the cost for Absolutely. Each. You see, every customer who owns a fleet mm-hmm. will want to know what the vehicle is actually costing them to run. It's actually a good point. Um, Solic yeah. has to be there. You know, insurance has to be there. All these yeah. things, that is all part, I would say that is all part of Fleet Run. In fact, you can have an uh, option of your driving license, or driver's driving license, or the car's uh, mulkia, renewal, registration renewal. Exactly. All this can be stored in Fleet Run with yeah. the current functionality, and you can get reminders when the next renewal date is. So, so that's very is, important. Yeah, this is there. No, but I mean the costing. You see, every penny mm-hmm. that is spent on a vehicle is a cost. Yes. Total cost of ownership. Yeah, exactly. The expense, <laughs> what the average will be on a daily basis. Yeah. Well, uh, in the fleet run, mostly it's designed for the vehicle maintenance purposes. Okay. Uh, you have option of custom fields, as I mentioned. You can specify the values, the price of the vehicle, uh, when it was purchased. And after one year, maybe you can edit the field or add a new field with the current depreciation value. This way, you will have a report of all the custom fields that are displayed also. But... Mm-hmm. So that would, would be shown as the uh, average yearly cost. 
Yes, uh, probably this is also an uh, option. Like when you are, as I said, when you are adding the cost of the vehicle in the f custom fields, you will be able to see a report which will display the total cost along with the uh, cost of the vehicle. What were the cost spent on fuel for that vehicle? What was the cost spent on maintenance and all aggregated together? You're total. already doing that. We are already doing. You're this. already doing that. But what I'm saying is there are some bits which have been left out. See, yeah, so I, I, as, as a business, for example, depreciation. Yeah, no, depreciation yeah. is fine because every mm -hmm. country will have a separate depreciation model. Mm -hmm. You know, Dubai is fifteen percent in the first year and then ten percent year after year, mm -hmm. and then there is a thing of what, how much you have sold the vehicle for after three years or five years, mm -hmm. or as far as the car rental business is concerned, they always want to know. But the, those are add-ons. Yes. But at this moment in time, we just need to focus on uh, what the vehicle actually costs you. What yes. the total expense of the vehicle from purchase, including all maintenance, insurance, fuel costs, etc., till we dispose of it. Yeah, it's a very uh, nice idea, I would say. And I would like to understand more in detail. Uh, That's we can, not a problem. We can meet in the coffee break. Sure, of course, we'll meet over a lot of coffee breaks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like coffee break, or we also have a dinner today. So we can meet and we can. I'll try to understand more about your idea. We already run this operation, but we have to do it manually. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're using Excel to do it manually. It gives you an average cost. Yeah. As far as the fuel costs are concerned, this is uh, that's standard fuel and maintenance. We can do that, but you don't have the cost of the vehicle, the insurances, etc. Mm -hmm. Salik and all the government fees. You see, in Dubai, don't forget you have a lot of government fees. If you're anywhere else in the world, mm -hmm. there are hardly any fees over yes. here. We've got Salik. We've got and not to forget, most important, all the fines. Yeah, that's right. You see, and well, again, uh, if some functionality is not available through the default functionality of VLON or Freetron, you always have an open API. You can use this, you can create <laughs> custom solution. We want you to do it. I don't because, we do have it. Such, uh, <laughs> because we have such why have, uh, great why questions. Why have a system when we have to do it ourselves? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you are asking really great questions and it always lead to the API because the questions are very tricky. So, yeah. No problem. That's a good way out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, uh, Thank you. Request anyway. Um, um, Navas will um, get all the information from you, and we will consider it uh, and put it in our backlog. Thank you very much. Yes. It's, about, it's a very good request. Yes, please. Uh, you, you seem to have a question. Sorry. Uh, Walid Al Bashir from Inbound. Uh, I just have a comment on uh, Suleiman's request. Yeah. In the last thematics in Dubai here, mm -hmm. we have offered the complete solution to manage the total cost of ownership with the pre-built APIs oh, wow. on well on uh, See, platform. See, it was done through the APIs, and um, <laughs> we we happy to collaborate. It has all the elements of the of the vehicles in terms of uh, um, total cost of ownership. Uh, considering the vehicle cost, depreciation, and everything, and would love to uh, to share the views with you. The app is there, is running. We're using it for our clients. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Walid, for uh, enlightening us with your application. Okay, so let's proceed. Uh, what uh, we have sorry. next? Uh, Nawaz, uh, we also have some online viewers watching us live on YouTube, mm -hmm. and they have left some questions in the comment section. So I'm just going to read a few of them out. Mm -hmm. They're from a gentleman named John. Mm -hmm. He has questions with regards to Hectara. Okay. Will there be an opportunity to integrate our own applications with Hectera to support any plantations in agriculture? Mm -hmm. And to continue, he asks, in Fleet Run, we need to be able to use scatter diagrams to analyze variation. Like the charts? Scatter, yes. Okay. And uh, last, mm -hmm. last query from the same gentleman. Also, we need the ability to classify the service, example, fuel system, drivetrain, etc. So I, I believe he's yes. uh, an avid user of Hectera application. If you have anything that you'd like to speak to him, he's, um, he's watching live. Okay, so John, um, for your very first question with Hectera, yes, you can add uh, any number of custom apps to VLON because we provide open API and you can do the custom developments on Hectera. Uh, now coming to the next question regarding the uh, fleet run, uh, regarding the chart which you're asking, we have a dashboard option available in fleet run. You can explore it. Uh, the dashboard displays uh, the bar charts and also I believe there is a, a line chart also available. So you can explore it. it. You will find it in the dashboard tab and also when you go inside the uh, service objects and open any unit, you will be able to see a diagram of, of it as well over there. 
And the third question regarding the type of expense, a type of service, you can name your services yourself. You're free to name it like a fuel service, uh, I mean, uh, general service or uh, breakdown service and all this. So uh, you can uh, categorize your services this way. And there is a separate tab for fuel fillings, so you can even register your fuel fillings uh, from this tab over there. I hope this helps you. Thank you, Nawaz. So now let's proceed with the next application, which is logistics. Um, basically, uh, I'd like to remind that the logistics has a web application for the dispatcher and a mobile application for the drivers too. It allows you to control the whole order management process, uh, including order placement, planning, distribution, route optimization, and coordinates. We have completely changed the login page design and updated the application logo. Uh, in the navigation bar. Now the page has a different background, the logistics icon is different, and the design of the fields is also different. Before we proceed, I'd like to inform you that some of these logistics features which I'm showing you are also simultaneously same for VLON Local as well. So you have a mark there, you will be able to see that the same feature is available in VLON Local logistics as well. Um, we have added a new map layer in logistics, which is the open street maps. And uh, we have also added a new column into the Roots tab over there. And uh, we have completely revised our documentation for logistics. So if you go to the VLON Help Center, you will be able to see a totally different uh, logistics documentation. It is more user friendly now. Uh, in the chat, you will now hear a sound uh, notification when there's a new incoming message. Now in the chat window, you can click the sound button to switch the sound on or off at any time. You can now view files attached to the orders. We have added the ability to change the order of address information for the source uh, for uh, the Gurtam maps. We have improved the optimization algorithm. Algorithm solution have become 30% more efficient now. Uh, you can not only import the orders to the logistics, but now you can even export the orders from the logistics application. Now you can customize the algorithm solutions and choose one of the uh, modes over there. You will find fast, uh, cost effective, and uh, the balanced modes. So you can choose the most comfortable, uh, the most convenient mode for you. If the take into account the units location option is enabled, then the system will take into account uh, the uh, location of each unit before assigning any uh, order to him. So the most nearest person to the orders will be assigned the uh, orders. If the strict delivery interval option is enabled, it is planned to deliver the order adhering to the uh, delivery interval. If it is not possible, the order is excluded from the route. If the service within delivery interval option is enabled, the algorithm seeks to include the service time in the delivery interval. Now a new block is located in the planning tab, um, which is the root cost calculation, which you're seeing here. Uh, thanks to this functionality, the user will be able to estimate the delivery costs now. In the new application version, we have come up with an improved design of the navigation bar and tables. Um, previously, the application language depended on the uh, language selected in the user settings in VLON, but now you can change in it in the general tab of the logistics itself. Uh, we have also improved the logic for displaying help tips and now you can enable or disable the help tips. So if you do not want to keep having those pop-ups, you can disable them now. Moving order cards become, uh, became much quicker and easier. Uh, the move button was added to the order cards in the upper right corner. Uh, so the end user clicks on the button and he selects the route uh, on the map to which he wants to move the order to. We also improved the design of the notifications window. Now the window has become larger, the style of pop-up notifications has changed, and the unread message displayed has also changed. Uh, you can even mark all the notifications as read at, at, at once. On the general tab of the settings, we have created the order rejection reasons, uh, where you can specify the reasons for rejecting orders or create a, uh, or create a list of required reasons for rejection and autocomplete uh, bottom. We have also uh, created the order fulfillment uh, requirement section uh, to which you have added a new option uh, that is not to confirm orders without signature. So if it is enabled, the driver can, cannot confirm the order without he takes a confirmation signature from the customer. 
uh, well, I really like the way our business analysts think, isn't it? So, uh, it's a cool addition uh, to logistics and uh, let's take a look what we have next. On the mobile application, uh, there is a mobile application for logistics. You have an uh, option to order, confirm the order and a pop-up and you can sign on it, on the mobile itself. Sorry? Uh, can they don't want the signature screen. Oh, yeah. So you mean a pen? <laughs> well, it's not a mandatory feature. If you do not want to use this, you can use alternate ways. So it's an option. Yeah. Yeah, it's now. Photograph of the yeah. customer? Well, yes, you can also attach photographs. Not even photograph of the customer because the data protection act. Not even photograph of the data Actually, what they're doing is when they're delivering goods, they're putting it out and you don't take your photograph of the goods. That's what they're doing. Yes. The suggestion is how you decide to use the data Well, that's again a valid point. We'll have to think on those lines now so just because we have. I'm talking about two different countries that are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the UK, for example, if something is being delivered to my door, they put the package outside my door and they take a photograph of the door. They don't just take a photograph of the recipient. Yeah, this again, we have an uh, option of photograph from the mobile application or a signature, or you can simply pass some comments that it's delivered. So both all the options are available. You can choose whatever you want. Delivery can't pass a comment because hmm. they can deliver it to anybody and say it was delivered. Yeah, it can be photo or a signature probably. Thank you, uh, Suleiman, for adding this. I have a lot of experiences, I'll tell you, and I'm very good at what happened yesterday, so that's why I asked the question. Yeah, I mean, you're bringing up very valid points, and sure, we'll have a Q&A session after this, once I complete this, so we'll discuss more also. Sure, thank you. <laughs> uh, well, we have made the cards uh, on the warehouses tab more compact. Now, all the specified parameters are displayed as icons. Uh, we have also added a dynamic search by parameters for warehouses. Uh, we have improved the distribution optimization section on the planning tab. Now, you can specify the traffic model if, if the width traffic option is selected in the root parameters. In the general tab of the settings, we have moved the notification method option to the order parameters section. In addition, the show button is displayed uh, in cards of all types of notifications, except for notifications when a route is deleted. We have added a new units page to the menu uh, where uh, the dispatcher sees the cost uh, uh, values for each vehicle and uses them to calculate the route cost uh, or monitor uh, the other parameters. And as a consequence, you can find the most suitable transport for an order. It has become more convenient to move orders from route to route as the areas in the table where you can move an order are highlighted now in yellow color. Uh, sorry, in, it's orange color. In the table of the planning, routes, and template pages, we have redesigned the buttons, expanded the lines, and highlighted a, a line over which the cursor is pointed. So overall, the uh, UI is, has been improved. We have modified the reports, and uh, you will find the uh, details of mod what modifications we have done. There is now uh, an actual fulfillment time column that could be visit time, confirmation time, rejection time, or uh, exit time. And unloading time has been renamed into service time. Uh, we have added new columns to the logistics reports, and also now the new algorithm for uh, visit time determining. If the driver has not visited the order, uh, then the data is specific, in specific columns will not be displayed. With no fulfillment time concept is in use, we have specified the visit and the confirmation of uh, um, or rejection of orders. Now let's take a look at the logistics improvement that are specific to VLON local only. In the reports, you will find a new option for uh, displaying uh, the estimated and actual routes on the map. Uh, in the settings, there's a new custom fields tab uh, where you can create as many custom fields as you like. 
uh, we have added the option to turn off the icons grouping in the general tab. So now if the grouping is disabled, uh, closely placed icons will not be combined into one. Uh, in the address field, you can create an order by entering the latitude uh, uh, or longitude coordinates instead of directly putting the uh, address itself. Dear partners, I have just covered the logistics improvements. Uh, are you happy with the new features which we have done? Thank you. And how many of you would like to use this logistics application for your customers? Wow, so many hands up. No, that's nice. Uh, so if you have any questions, you feel free to ask. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, we are running out of time a bit, uh, but let's do it uh, real quick. Uh, quick. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just quick ones. Uh, yeah, just APIs. Yeah. <laughs> we had a request about auto uh, confirmation once a vehicle enters a geofence where the client is and an, an actual sensor was activated. Let's say if a vehicle mm -hmm. enters a geofence and turns off the vehicle, it's automatically sent as confirmed. Is that available now? Uh, you mean when the vehicle enters a geofence, automatically order is confirmed? Yes. Uh, I believe it is there. I need to check once. Uh, it, it, I, was, it was sensor related. So let's say the vehicle enters, turns off the engine, or let's say it's a school bus, it enters the mm -hmm. zone, open the door. That's but a, will it go and mark the order in logistics as confirmed or not? Yes. I'll have to check it once. Okay. Uh, I will let you know. I'll get back to you on this. But right. yes, it uh, can be. Is the locator integrated now in uh, logistics? So let's say yes. I, I have a, I have to dispatch an order. So the customer will automatically receive a link with. Uh, yes, we have this in in the notifications. You can type your own message, what you want to send to your partners uh, or to your customers. It also contains a locator link. Okay. He can open it from his mobile or email and see where the driver is going, how he's coming to his uh, okay. place. And, and you said the route optimization was improved by thirty percent. Can yes. we now specify if we want to optimize the number of uh, fleet used or less distance or less time, or is, it has its own algorithm? Uh, yes, in the uh, orders uh, section, you can specify how much weight this particular uh, no, Yeah, I know that, order. but in the optimization, how, how does it think? There like, are three I, modes I, I wanna currently. I want to use the less number of cars, or I want to deliver in the fastest time, or yes, I want to drive Yes, there are the, three modes. So if the, you're using the fast mode, it will not consider uh, whether the vehicle is overburdened, there is a lot of weight on it. It will simply choose the fastest route and it will assign to the nearest unit and that's it. So even if the vehicle is a uh, bit overloaded, you will still allow it. But if you want the most cost efficient way, it will not allow to load more uh, orders into one vehicle. So the load will be less and it will consume less fuel and it will be most cost efficient uh, route for you. So th this is how we have improved the optimization modes. Uh, any other questions here? Yeah. Hi, thanks. Uh, I would like to ask about the optimization. Uh, are you providing the optimization tool by yourself or you are taking third-party optimization? Uh, well, this is our own algorithms which we are using. Okay. Yes, cool. so we do have our own algorithms in place. Uh, you can choose, as I mentioned, any type of mode. And uh, if you choose the fastest mode, the system will suggest use the nearest unit, which is available to deliver the order and the fastest route possible. Mm -hmm. If you want the most cost efficient, it will uh, take a different route, uh, maybe with less traffic and it, it will load more orders on it. So uh, yeah. That's my second question. Like you said that you are planning the routes on the top of OSM maps, so OpenStreet maps. Yeah. And uh, you're also visualizing the traffic data. So, so uh, logistics even use uh, Google Maps. So if you have a Google Maps API and you're using logistics, you, you will also have the traffic data. So it will also, also consider the traffic uh, while uh, it's planning the routes. So the traffic provider is Google Maps. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And if I would like to optimize the route uh, based on the track attributes of the vehicle, so the... Mm -hmm. Like the, the, uh, um, uh, the vehicle cannot take more load, for example? Mm. No, no, I mean like measurements of the vehicle, so I'm ah, not okay. allowed to enter the um, narrow Number streets of... or low bridges or uh, the vehicle okay. is carrying the hazmat material. I, this is a very good question. I would say yes. I'm not sure. Uh, I have to check. Yeah, we can specify if it's a car or a bus or a truck, but whether the system will take it into consideration while suggesting the route or not, I'll have to confirm you this.
Okay, because uh, as far as I know, the Google Maps or as a Maps doesn't have this kind of attributes in yeah, yeah. map data. Yeah, like I know this. So it's a very good question. I would say, uh, I don't know, I have to make notes now <laughs> to get back to you guys. But uh, yes, uh, please feel free to write to us. Uh, always uh, you can reach out to me. Uh, I will share my email ID by end of the presentation so you can write to me with your queries. I will be definitely answering all uh, this. I Sorry? <laughs> of course I do. So uh, one more question, the last ones, I promise. Yeah. So um, I'm just wondering whether you are creating only the list of stops for the driver or you can do also pre-computed pre pre route which is going to be pushed to the driver. So it means that you are designing the route which is going to be exact, the um, same as for the dispatcher and for the driver, or you are just uh, providing the list of stops and the route is calculated on the device of the driver. That's all. Uh, we are calculating the route automatically uh, when we are assigning it to the driver. It's done automatically through the system. But if you would like to change this, you can zoom in on the map and you can change some points. For example, there is a route suggested by the map and uh, there is a construction work going on somewhere on the map. And you would like, you do not want your vehicles to go from that road. So you can drag and uh, make an alternate route manually. Ah, okay, so the dispatcher can modify the route on he the can back and then it. just push it to the driver's device. Yes, and driver will receive a mobile notification so he can start navigating it to the order location from the Okay, cool, app. thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Can we use our own uh, route optimization engine? Uh, sorry? Can we use our own route optimization engine uh, through API, perhaps? Or? API. <laughs> API. Okay. Yes. Regarding the capacity distribution of the the, the distribution of uh, based on the capacity of the vehicle, mm -hmm. is there any improvement that has been done into that in terms of the weight or the cubic meters? Yes. So, uh, well, now, when you're creating a order, you can specify the order weight. What is the weight of the order? And in the unit properties also in the logistics application, uh, in the logistics settings, in fact, you can specify what is the maximum weight allowed for each vehicle. So if I, if I have 80 orders, uh, if I have a thousand orders, for example, and 80 vehicles, mm -hmm. would it tell me, you know, those orders that will fit into 71 vehicles, you don't need the 80 vehicles all? Will, will it tell you whether these uh, orders will be fit in 71, you do not need other vehicles? Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's not going to show this. But yes, if you're trying to overload any vehicles with the uh, set capacity, the system will alert you on this. So it does, uh, it does based on the vehicle, not a group of vehicles, you know, uh, the optimization. Based it on does the based on Based on a vehicles. specific vehicle capacity, not like a group no, it of is, vehicle it is, capacity. It's a common uh, setting which you do in the logistics settings. You set a vehicle capacity for all your vehicles. And system takes into consideration that none of these vehicles cross this capacity. Uh, fine. As, as a single vehicle, that's fine. That's understood. What I mean, if I have a thousand order mm -hmm. and I have loaded 80 vehicles for this thousand order normally, then yes. uh, would it tell me, no, you do not need the 80 vehicles. It would fit within 71 orders. Mean the optimization is not done on the, on the vehicle level. It is done on a group of vehicle level. Mm -hmm. You, you um, know what I mean? No, I, I'm not sure. With the, I don't think it does this, but uh, what, uh, again, it does is if you have so many orders, it will just suggest you uh, that you're overloading some of the orders. But if you're using less of your vehicles and your orders is fitting within 71 vehicles itself, system will not say you that you do not need these nine more vehicles. It will not do that. So it will distribute for the 71 vehicles only? Uh, it, it will distribute for the 71, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. The route, you mean? Uh, the plan. If he plans the, plan. the deliveries in the morning and then there are a VIP customer that requests uh, urgent delivery, can this be rerouted? Um, uh, yeah, as, uh, uh, as you can see, there are three modes. So system will suggest you the route based on these three modes. And if you're not happy with the mode suggested by the, uh, the route suggested by the system, you are free to go and manually even drag the lines on the map and create your own route as well. So you have all the dynamic options. What I mean is the order of deliveries. Yeah, Would order of changed. deliveries. So if you have so 10 orders, one. you are free to choose which one will be first, which one will be second. But system will suggest you the best one, but you are free to change again the order. 
like you want the last order to be delivered first and so on you can do that customization at any time during the day uh, before assigning it to the driver once this it's what, assigned this is what i mean once it's assigned yeah so once day. it's assigned he is already on the route so you'll not be able yes. to make more changes that's it mm. yeah that's but you will be able to continuously communicate with the driver using the mobile application uh, so driver can chat with you and you will get chat messages in your logistics application and you can chat with him if you want to make any changes you can let him know from the chat option it will not change the change the routes for him it will not change the route or you can simply cancel the route and create a new one Oh, you can. Yeah, you can simply cancel the, the route. Day. Yeah, so you, you can re- simply ask him to disregard yeah. it. He, he can reject the orders, and you can create a new route okay. altogether. Thank you. Yeah. There are two options again. If you choose the strict delivery mode option, then he have to follow the path. If he is not following that path, if he skips any order which he was assigned to, then that order will must will be marked as skipped. So if you don't choose this option, then he is free to go. uh um, like select uh, deliver it as he wants okay so i'm oh, sorry uh, nawaz yeah. we also have another question from one of the view live viewers mm-hmm. uh maham mahanad ibrahim wants to know if there are any plans to allow customers to request the service from the logistics app instead of doing that by using emails or phone calls request a uh, what again sorry are there any plans to allow customers to request the services from the logistics app instead of doing that by using emails or phone calls request the services using logistics mobile app i am not sure this uh, logistics mobile app is uh, for the drivers mostly to um first of all hello mohanath uh, he's watching on the black camera there oh yeah <laughs> hello Uh, so logistics mobile app is mainly for the drivers uh, so you can uh, assign orders to the drivers he can follow the routes confirm or reject the orders and uh, that's all about it but can he request uh, services through this app i would say no uh, i would actually need to get more idea about uh, what your requirement is so that i can suggest you something better so feel free to write to me mohanat sorry just allow me to clarify uh, nawaz mohanad wants to know about the logistics app not the mobile app yeah logistics app so yeah. can order can customers request services through logistics app i think this is what he is asking yes not not uh, the mobile app the web interface the web application um uh, like i received the early when yeah. i can log in and physically yes uh when he's what is the convenient time for him um uh, so mohanath uh, there is uh, one thing we can do if you are already using some application uh, you can uh, integrate the orders directly from there so, like some crm applications have a self service portal for the customers they can go there and they can even place their orders uh, and they can select their most convenient time these orders can be automatically bought into logistics through the logistics api so as soon as your customer creates a new order for delivery you will receive in it in the logistics and then you can start the normal process of assignment it to the drivers and the deliveries i hope uh, this will answer Thank your you. question okay uh, yes mm-hmm. you're yes. saying that there's a thousand orders allocated mm-hmm. right and gentleman valid said that he has allocated 70 vehicles yes how do you know those thousand orders are going to fit in 70 vehicles um okay now uh, you know the e- weight of each order so when you're creating the order you okay. enter the weight of it okay i've got and the then, weight and then in the uh, uh, settings of logistics you enter the maximum weight allowed for each vehicle fine this way it correlates and it's uh, recommends that this vehicle should not have more than these many orders because the weight is going beyond its uh... no i think something else needs to be added there mm-hmm. you need the dimensions of the box yeah uh, i know you were getting there <laughs> and uh, i believe yes this is a nice point i i don't think this we have this but uh, we are doing continuous improvements on our application and it's uh, it will be nice the to have the weight is irrelevant yes so you've got one guy who's selling jewelry mm-hmm. so he's got a thousand 
uh, 100 deliveries of jewelry to do, those will fit in the boot of a car. Yes. And then you've got one guy who's selling X, Y, and Z. So it's all very relative to what you're selling or what mm -hmm. you are delivering. So the dimensions is very important. So we have a, yes. a truck, a container, let's say a, con a shipping container, which is a 20 footer. It's got its dimensions of how much volume will fit in there. So mm -hmm. the question is, it has to be, you have to have a system for volume. So each box measurements go in yes. and that way it will allow and say, you don't need 70, you need 50 vehicles. Yes. You can deliver a hundred deliveries a day. I agree. Uh, that's a very nice suggestion again. I, I'm not sure if we have some functionality already in VLON which can suffice this uh, requirement, but uh, if you don't have, it's nice to have uh, this kind of feature. It's uh, very would, much required yes. because it's based on volume. It's not based on weight. Yes. Weight is totally different. I mean, weight, I'll have a seven and a half tonner and I can put as much uh, steel in it as I want. You know, I can only put seven and a half tons yes. of steel. But if I have uh, different items... Yeah, we, the volume. So it's volume and weight, of course. Yeah. So thank you, Suleiman, for the suggestion again. Don't worry. These are all real-time <laughs> situations, my friend. Yeah. Uh, so if there are no other questions, we'll proceed with the last part of the presentation. Yes. Thank you. Kevin, uh, here. Yes. But uh, see, the name of uh, the application is perfect, okay? But you focus on delivery. But in our case, we use it on uh, company who do uh, maintenance on site, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm using I'm using for my team also. So mm -hmm. if we send a job or task to the customer or to the uh, technician, he will mm -hmm. go using logistic. But uh, you, when you talk, you just focus on uh, delivery item to the home. So we yes, can. Yes, that's a very good point. Yeah. Uh, logistics is mainly designed for order deliveries, but yes, if you have tasks like how. Uh, for maintenance company. Yeah, for maintenance, did, where uh, you have uh, visit people the, to visit up some places, do some checks. There also you can apply logistics application. So. Uh, what I would suggest is if you're new to logistics or if you want to know what logistics can do, you can always watch the video webinars which we have created on our Gurutam website. So you will have more clear understanding and what possibilities uh, you can have with VLON. Also, we can watch the use case libraries of uh, VLON on our website. So, yes. Yes. Uh, well, we are going to, we are working on this, like one order can have multiple stages. So uh, I uh, have had work, a word with the business analyst who's behind logistics. So yeah, I know that we are working on something like this to have separate orders inside one single order, for example. So, uh, and he can have multiple warehouses to pick the orders and then go for this uh, delivery. So yeah, this is a point. It can be tasks like task one, task two. Yes, that's a nice point. Yes. Two cars to one order. Into one order. You, 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 have, you have a job to do and you must send the uh, send the technical team, you must send the construction machinery, you must send the excavator there, uh, and you must see all of all this to, to one order. Yeah, so that's a very new concept for me, totally that's excavator to go to this order mm -hmm. to this order. Mm -hmm. So inside one order there are Uh, usually when there are such tricky requirements, they use, uh, our partners use APIs to create, create custom solutions, but uh, it's a very new thing. I have not even imagined of such a thing like having one order and two vehicles working on the same. So, uh, okay. Uh, for me, it's... Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for all your valuable questions. We see that you've been working very hard in this past time. Unfortunately, we do have an agenda that we have to yeah. stick to. 
and we would love to address all your questions probably over the coffee break or during lunch or during dinner yeah because everyone else is waiting here so i'm i'm very sorry i'm very sorry yeah, uh, yeah that's what i was okay. about to say we can always interact uh, via emails or also now after this uh, coffee break thank you thank you for understanding we have uh, almost the last section now related to nimbus so let me just uh, show this to you um well nimbus is uh, an application which is designed for public transportation uh, monitoring I, i would not say public transportation it's fixed routes monitoring we have created the what's new uh, uh, feature uh, in nimbus so all the latest updates of nimbus will be visible here in the what's new window when you log in Uh, so now the nimbus uses a new message processing strategy according to which the system continuously receives and analyzes messages from units bound to routes or assigned to rights manually we released a massive system update that provides an opportunity to manage rights in a new operation mode the current version enjoys such features as the automatic assignment of unit uh, from a set circular routes routes with intersection and so on automatic assignment of a unit to a ride uh, implies that the system selects one unit from several ones and assigns it to a route after assigning the unit tracking proceeds as usual circular route uh, circular route is a is a route in which the first stop coincides with the last one but has a different visiting time specified in the schedule Uh, previously the nimbus algorithm didn't imply working with circular routes uh, which caused certain inconveniences for the users but now in nimbus you have an option to mark the first order as the last order or the last order as the first order as well so it, the route will be a circular one another change significantly expands the scope of nimbus implementation as it allows tracking public transport rights without schedules which in turns means effective monitoring of uh, rides that are not bound to a specific schedule transport that departs when there is a sufficient number of passengers public transport in regions where scheduled rides are not possible for various reasons well dear partners i have just covered the nimbus improvements if you have any questions related to nimbus you can ask me now um is this is the right time okay so thank you very much for visiting us this year ah oh. hi uh, yeah i've just got uh, two quick com uh, comments we've been using uh, nimbus extensively yeah. and out of the out of the decline uh, challenges that we're facing is one thing the kilometers is not brought to nimbus which is again need to go back and forth through the api to get the uh, how many how many how many kilometers you have consumed a day mm -hmm. on an, on a schedule or or a trip Uh, the second part, which we have discussed with uh, with uh, Victoria, I think, and, and, and the team for Nimbus, is like um, the driver, um, based on the operation that which we we, uh, we do in every day, the driver is the main element. You know, when when mm -hmm. when you schedule, you do hold the, the driver accountable rather yes. than the bus. Mm -hmm. The whole Nimbus is based on 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 bus as as a main element. The driver is. completely neglected so i don't know if this is on on the development plan or whatever because normally <clears throat> most of the similar systems mm -hmm. that they assign to the driver and then the driver can pick up any bus and move if the bus break down then they will carry on with another bus mm -hmm. and then the driver will be accountable another uh, health uh, safety and environmental measures for example um mandate the driver not to drive more than 8 hours or 10 hours a day this yes. is also another challenge which we have been doing a lot of abi stuff to 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 maneuver again after uh, i know it was a bit of new product some time back mm -hmm. but again with a lot of lesson learned i think uh, uh, this couple of uh, factors need to be taken into consideration in further development this mm -hmm. is my take we've been using it extensively and we learned a lot Yeah, I, I'm really. Uh, I like the last part uh, the most, <laughs> the point which you mentioned of drivers managing, um, because we have uh, AETR standards already in the system. So based on this, uh, if you use a tachograph and if you are monitoring the drivers' duties, 
VLON is able to give you the infringement reports. Like it gives you. Fine, VLON. VLON is fine. I'm, yeah. I'm talking about Nimbus. Because okay. again, we, In, have, from to the run, Nimbus. we mm -hmm. have to run ABI calls back and forth from VLON okay. to Nimbus. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's not always, you know, the, the best option. You know. Yeah. Thank so you if for. You can bring uh, the ATL mm -hmm. features into Nimbus. That will be a really. Uh, uh, good addition. The ATR good features, yes. Uh, let me uh, note these points. Uh, I'll probably have to go through the whole video once again what we uh, the, of this event to note down your questions. Uh, thank you for your suggestions and uh, uh, these uh, insights. Any other questions before we close this event? Okay. So thank you, partners, for visiting us this year. <laughs> It was my pleasure to present the new features of VLON ecosystem to you. And uh, please let me remind you that you can leave your feedback on the VLON functionalities on our forum. And uh, also, you can follow the new updates on our blog. Uh, so thank you uh, for being with me here and for listening to me. And uh, I hope you liked the presentation.